My name is Matt Cuffling, I'm the clinical editor of Optometry Today TV and I'm going to talk about slit lamp biomicroscopy, otherwise known as Volk Lens Assessment. The advantages of slit lamp biomicroscopy over direct ophthalmoscopy include the fact that you get a stereoscopic 3D view of the fundus. It tends to be easy to get an image or you get a better image through media opacities. You can utilise the features of the slit lamp such as magnification or using a red free filter. And the image tends to be less affected by patient refractive error than the images obtained from a direct ophthalmoscope. When performing Volk Lens Assessment, you may wish to dilate the pupils of your patient, although many of the modern high positive powered lenses still enable a good stereoscopic image to be obtained over a wide extent of the retina. And remember, the image that you view through the eyepieces when performing Volk will be aerially inverted and laterally reversed. This means that if you are going to record what you see on a blank piece of paper, Remember at the end to turn your page through 180 degrees to ensure that this is recorded the correct way up. More commonly, you will be recording uh, what you see at the bottom of a record card which has already been filled in. So remember at this stage to turn your record card through 180 degrees and draw exactly what you see to ensure that the image will be recorded uh, the correct way up on the record card. As with all slit lamp based techniques, we need to ensure that we correctly focus the slit lamp for ourselves at the start. You may wish to uh, use the slit lamp with or without your correction, usually depending on how much the level of astigmatism is. As with all slit lamp based techniques, we need to ensure that we correctly focus the slit lamp before we start. This includes racking out the eyepieces to the maximum plus and then returning them to the first point of best focus, ensuring we have our correct PD set and using a high magnification, high intensity beam to ensure we get good clear images in both eyes. We then need to make sure the illumination and viewing system are perfectly in line one behind the other. We would use a parallel pipe head beam, usually two millimeters in width and with a height that matches the pupil height. We tend to set the magnification to around 10 times magnification to start the, the bulk assessment. We would have the room illumination dim and we would have your patient looking straight past you we tend to hold the vault lens between our thumb and first finger with the V of the vault lens pointing towards the patient and the vault lens held in the examiner's right hand when examining the left eye and held in the, their left hand when examining the patient's right eye. With the patient looking straight ahead, we would tend to focus the slit lamp onto a portion of the tear film overlying the centre of the pupil. We tend to hold the vault lens around five millimeters in front of the patient's eye and we need to ensure by looking around the side of the slit lamp that the beam of light is entering the vault lens and then entering the patient's eye going straight through the center of their pupil. In order to steady the lens and hold it in place you may wish to hook your little finger onto the headrest or use the vault lens case as a rest for your elbow. So before returning to the joystick and getting back behind the eyepieces, make sure that the lens is being held steady and that light is still entering the centre of the pupil. So return to the eyepieces, pull back on the joystick until you get an image of the Volk lens surface. Keep going until you get an orange glow which will then turn into a focused image of the fundus with a little bit more manipulation. If the patient's lids are getting in the way for any reason, you can use your third finger to keep them pinned out of view. You'll examine the optic nerve head, taking advantage of the stereoscopic nature of the image. You'll look at the inferior and superior arcades and scan across the whole posterior pole, usually finishing with the macula when the patient's had a chance to adapt to the light levels. Importantly, we'll often then want to look in peripheral positions of gaze to get a, a wider field of view. Now, I'm going to give you an example of looking at the superior fundus. So, in order to see the superior fundus, we ask the patient to look up as you would do in direct ophthalmoscopy. You will then need to maybe tilt the vault lens towards you slightly and possibly move the slit lamp down a little bit. You may wish to view from the side to ensure that the beam of light is still entering the pupil. The image that you should see now will be the superior portion of the retina, although we still need to remember that this image is aerially inverted and laterally reversed. So the patient's looking up, we're seeing the superior portion of the fundus, however, of that image, the superior part of the image is the bit that's really closest to the disc 
and the inferior part is really the bit that's furthest away from the disc.